my little pumpkins. Man, was this a fun build for one of my goofballs. Leaf asked me to come in and um, he actually, a lot of this work, a lot of this footprint you see, um, this is this is his, like he did this awesome kind of, um, you know, terrain leveling wall up here. Really, really like that. I'm actually, now that I'll like always have this save file, I'm gonna come in and steal this wall and start using it. But um, nonetheless, he asked me to come in. He said he did not like the theming that he was doing. He was going for like an African village style and um, said he could just not make it look like he was envisioning uh, what he wanted it to look like. And he said, is there any way you can come in and just like, he said, I'm not asking you to, you know, spend 10 weeks on this, but I need a village and I need the area around the pygmy hippos redesigned. And I said, sure. Send it my way. Let me um, let me jump in and and give it a try. And uh, the bones, I, like I said, they were really really good. And this is this is definitely a master class of don't get rid of blueprints that you can't find uh, projects for. Like you know, this bridge has laid dormant since mm, November of 2021, maybe. Um, and I just never had anything for it, never had a spot for it, never thought it looked right. And here we are, August of 2022, almost a year later, eight, nine months later. And uh, I thought, wait a minute, I have a bridge. What about we theme it, we, we tailor it, change it a little bit of, you know, a little bit away from the Islands of Adventure style, which what it, which what it was first intended for. And use that in Leaf's Village. And lo and behold, it worked. I think it has a really, really awesome presence down in here. Like we said in Suyana, it, it pulls you down in here to explore. But I think it works really well because it doesn't take all the spotlight away from your hippos. It just like the way that we were able to set it off just far enough away from the exhibit, um, it like lets you it lets you negotiate time between both. Like you definitely still want to come down here and see these little guys, but you also want to come over here, explore the bridge, do some shopping, set under it. Um, you know, just look at all the decorations on it. What's holding it up. Are there people walking across up? Like what's up there? It's just got so much intrigue and so much of like, you need to explore this type vibe and it's literally not used in any of my other projects probably never use it again because we kind of you know um we've kind of uh you know negotiated this into leaf's project and i think it'd be a little redundant if i use it anywhere else now uh, i just think it just it fits so perfect right here and to kind of tell the you know tell the story of of this whole area um one of the things i changed about leaf's exhibit uh, I really, really kind of uh, narrowed the viewing glass. Leafs kind of, it come way out over here. Still looked good. Like it was actually, um, it was actually a tough decision because I was taking so much glass away and I was taking so much viewing, viewing area away. But I just figured it, I figured I could theme it better if it was more condensed. Like, there's no way I could get away with this many logs, I don't feel, and with having to repeat it so much. And with the glass wall that we first had in here, the design would have had to carry this thing three different steps, I'd say. Um, I just think the overlapping, I don't think I could have made it look right. But with kind of, you know, sinking up this window, really shrinking it, um, it kind of lets this area pop more. It lets the log breathe. We've got a little bit of foliage. We've got the, uh, like your stone support here. And then it leads into like an elevated boardwalk area where you can still see the animals really, really well, especially like if they were messing up here, kind of like in their little marshy area and up here on the beach, even that little guy, if you're standing here at guest level, you'd be able to see them kind of out there swimming. Um, I went with the ramp, like, you know, one thing that's big to, to Leaf and I is to not use stairs if you can absolutely help it because we really, really like to design with ADA in mind. Um, so we definitely would want the wheelchairs, uh, you know, handicap accessible 
um, guests to be able to come up here and like enjoy this whole exhibit and not just be kind of stuck down here at the glass. So that is why, particularly with, with Leaf and I, you don't see a lot of stairs in the design. Um, like to like to try to really rack our brains and incorporate how this would have to be designed so everybody could enjoy it. And uh, that's another fun part about just this little bit of an elevated ramp um, and then kind of up here to your shade and your covered beach area. We've got the little um, little second uh, second secondary barrier fencing, which I learned a lot about from Simply Savannah, you know, like coming in and being like, Estan, you idiot. You can't let the animals just come up to one fence. You kind of have to have that sec second barrier where, you know, the guests watch from one end, but the animals are kind of kept back um, with with that uh, second layer of fencing. So, uh, yeah, yeah, really, really fun project. I, I You know, I, I'm always nervous at first when I say yes to this type of thing, but the one thing about Leaf that's always so fun when he asks me to do this, it's always like manageable requests. Um, and bold too, like when she asked me to come in and help with stuff, it's always, it doesn't seem as daunting when they ask you to just do an exhibit and a themed out area than when you're going in and trying to like build a whole section of a zoo. That kind of, that kind of becomes too much and you almost end up taking over from the original designer. So I love kind of popping in and doing these, uh, de doing these little kind of one-off builds for my buddies. And this was uh, definitely no exception. Um, this guy right here, this is kind of like a little, uh, almost just kind of like a little housing back, you know, like a little staging area that came off of my Tamu Tamu uh, quick service little uh, counter restaurant. And Leaf said that he may even turn this into a restaurant one day, but I just thought it was, uh, I just thought it flowed with that hill really well because you can see Leaf actually has all of this sloping down this way. So you can see how high the house is and some of this, uh, you know, some of these angles when you're, you know, like when you're down here. Um, so, you know, it was just, I, I think I, we were able to move it over just far enough and it just plays on that hill really, really well. Um, we've got a little food truck in here that's parked here for the day. This right here was my first Planet Zoo blueprint ever. This was, uh, I believe if you still go to my workshop right now, this was uh, my first little shop that I ever did um, when we first got our hands on Planet Zoo. And this will always be one of my favorite builds. If anybody asks me to do an African build, the uh, Melo the Melowinga uh, guest house is always going to be a part of that. Accommodations Internet Cafe. Just so proud of how that come out. And I, like I said, I, I try to use it whenever I can. Um, I really need to go in. I just kind of ran out of time. I didn't have time to like start a whole new custom building. Um, but I really need to get back into Animal Kingdom and look up some more of those buildings that we haven't tried yet. And, uh, and, and get some more of these going just so I kind of have some more ammo for future builds. Uh, and, uh, you know, just such a, such a fun design concept for me to jump in and, and try to do those, uh, try to do those more African village style builds. And that's right when, uh, when Leaf asked me that and told me that was kind of the, uh, kind of the theme he was going for. I was like, yes, please. <laughs> yes, daddy. And this is another thing. It's just so cool that I was able to contribute, like look at my spot here in the grand scheme of things with this killer city zoo he has going on. You definitely gotta go check out that playlist and he's not very many, not a, not a ton, ton episodes in. So if uh, if you get a chance, definitely go uh, check his playlist out and I'll, I'll link his channel down below. But um, it's just so, it's such a fun thought that um, I've kind of contributed to this uh, to this African area. So if you're ever in this zoo, if he ever makes it and puts it on the workshop, uh, once you get past the uh, the SS Paradiso, uh, once you get past the big uh, the the big old boat, the big cruise ship, uh, S Dan's Pygmy African Village uh, is what awaits you in this little transition area. So, anyways, guys, I'll jump on out of here. Definitely go give Leaf a follow. And uh, he put a video up about this area too. So go uh, hear his thoughts on it and kind of let him know 
uh, what you think about this build. And yeah, thank you guys. I'm SDN Wolf as always. Don't forget to smash the like button if you end up enjoying this video and subscribe to us to keep up with all this Planet Zoo mischief. Leaf definitely has you uh, with the Planet Zoo mischief. Almost releases daily videos. And uh, I'm sure you'd have a, an awesome time if you're not already watching him. So, uh, yep, yeah, thank you. I'll catch you in the next video. See ya!